So I'm the chair of the neurology department here at the University of Washington. And that means that I set the course for our neurology enterprise uh, here at the university and then obviously in the county and the city and the region. That administrative work serves the department, but it also deals with our role in the university structures, the School of Medicine and uh, UW Medicine as entities, with the various hospitals that we work in and work with, and uh, with the other departments that provide clinical care here. So that's my administrative hat, and then I have a clinical hat, which is as one of the neurocritical critical care faculty, and so I work at Harborview Medical Center and take care of patients in the neuro ICU there. I think this is a very uh, challenging time in medicine in general. Uh, uh, there's tremendous financial pressure on health systems, the tremendous workforce challenges on health systems, and yet there's a tremendous demand for those services. And so balancing all of those competing elements just at a clinical level is a real um, uh, challenge, a real uh, stimulus. And then, you know, we think about us as an academic department, we have to do all of that as well as serve an education mission, as well as continue to drive the field forward with research. And so I find navigating that space incredibly stimulating. Um, and uh, I find our faculty and their commitment incredibly stimulating. So we, we have a faculty member here called Stephen Tapscott who says that you should always pursue things you're passionate about, even if you can't see a connection with them. And that was certainly the case for me. I did neurocritical care and then I did endovascular care. And his point is that if you do that, what you do is you build a connection that wasn't there before. You build something novel because you, you have a foot in both of those places. And that, that's been my experience. Our work in cerebrovascular um, is really disease based, right? It's not training background based or specialty based. And so being in those two different areas allowed me to bridge multiple domains and, and pull things together in a disease based way, both clinically and from a research standpoint. Research has many faces, right? There's, there's basic science research where you're looking at the mechanisms of disease and transmitters and receptors and the like. There is clinical research where you're dealing with those questions in, in patients. And then there's obviously that translational space between the two where um, you bring you know, bench work to the bedside as the saying goes. I've always been more invested in and interested in the clinical research. Uh, in, in the clinical front, again, there's, a, there, there's some options there. So you could be doing frontier work where you're trying to uh, see how new therapeutics or new approaches work in patients, or you could be doing implementation work. There's a tremendous amount that we know that we don't implement well, and therefore our patients aren't getting the benefit from. And I've actually been interested in, in both of those aspects of our clinical research. And so a lot of my clinical work, uh, our clinical research, sorry, has been related to large vessel occlusion stroke, uh, which is the worst form of ischemic stroke, where there's a blockage in the blood vessel in the brain and not just how we can treat it better, but how we can as a system handle patients better to get to care so they can get the help that we know they need. This is an amazing time uh, in the neurosciences. It's an amazing time in neurology. And I often think about the fact that the feel that I inherited as a junior neurologist coming out of uh, training is more different from the field I will pass on as a grey beard at some point in the future here than at any time in the history of our, of our space. The thing about the brain is that it's very complex, right? The, the brain is the most complex thing in the known universe and it's taken us a long time to work out some very fundamental uh, aspects of it. And even with that, there's a tremendous amount that we still don't know. We don't really know much about sleep, for example about how fundamental that is for human, human existence. So we're in a time when some of those basic mechanisms are being better understood. And because they're being better understood, we now have the option of therapeutic targets. 
And so these next five to 10 years are gonna be a, a launch pad into the therapeutic future of neurology, where we can really change these diseases and actually cure people. Uh, and I think of the generation of, of trainees now, they're the people that will actually do that. I think it's gonna be absolutely incredible. I think there are certain keys that are going to unlock many doors. An example is immunology. Right? I think we're going to understand how the brain's immune mechanisms work, how the body's immune mechanisms impact the brain. And that's going to be a key that unlocks many doors for many different neurological diseases. I think genetics is another example, right? We, we've come so far on the genetics front, but we're not quite yet at the point of making manipulations and changes. When we do, that's going to impact many, many diseases. And so I'm really excited about those big shifts. You know, we've been drifting in the right direction, but there's some big shifts that are going to happen as some of those keys become available to us. So I'm very much a structure and order sort of person. Uh, I find it very soothing to be in a structured environment. And uh, when I was a med student and we did neuroanatomy, I'd never seen anything that structured or the nervous system is incredibly organized. And so that hooked me at a very uh, early stage. And then the more I learned about it, the more interested I became. And, you know, if you think about it, every experience that you have in the world is a neurological experience, right? Every thought or memory or emotion, the view out the window, the way your chair feels, all of that is just neurology. And so it is the very core of our humanity. And uh, I couldn't think of a more exciting thing to do from a career standpoint, and I still can't. Um, I would say that what, what surprised me is actually the progress we've made. There, there were so many questions when I was a medical student and a junior um, uh, physician that are now answered. Uh, things that we, we understand in such a deep way compared to back in those days. And I think that rate of change has really taken me aback in the most positive way. If we are open to learning from experiences, every experience deepens us and broadens us. And so having a little bit of a circuitous route, I mean, many people have interesting stories or interesting routes, right? Having a little bit of a circuitous route to your destination um, just means you got to see and experience a lot of things you might not have done otherwise. And uh, for me, those were all learning opportunities. And so I, I feel like it uh, deepened me personally uh, in many unexpected ways. And I'm very grateful that it wasn't an easy straight path for me to, to get here. Uh, one thing that's important in our lives is to be able to see a path from where you are to where you want to go, right? And there are many ways you can see that path. It might be the person who's in the, the place that you want to be, right? You know, there's a woman in the role, or there's a minority in the role, or someone from my hometown in the role. It allows you to see that, that route. Um, a mentor, in my mind, is someone who helps direct that path and smooth it down for you. And so uh, I've had you know, innumerable mentors over the years, and I would highlight that I think mentorship is really a team sport. It's not that there's one person who guides you through it, it's that there are multiple people that bring their perspectives, people that are ahead of you and people that are behind you in terms of the trajectory of, of life. And uh, so I think about mentorship as, as, a, as a team activity. I also think it's important to distinguish between mentors and sponsors, right? Um, it's great that we have people that guide us on that path and give us direction, but it's also really powerful to have people that pick you up and carry you much further down. And so, so in our everyday work, we should think about whether we're mentors or sponsors and how we can help uh, with uh, individual careers. Level, um, especially when I started, there were many scenarios where I was the only person uh, in the room who was either from an international background or of a minority. And so uh, I felt very much the responsibility of how I carried myself and what I contributed and what it represented uh, at, a, at a bigger scale than my individual uh, self. What has happened through the course of my life is that my ability to um, 
include other people has progressively increased. And I think that'll, that'll be true in all of your lives as well. And so I look at my role now, right? Now I have the opportunity to decide who we hire and what they focus on and, and what they do. And uh, that's how we change the, the, the larger conversation. I try and be grateful um, in my life for you know, as many things as I can. I think it's, uh, it's one way to be mentally resilient. And knowing about the, the, the way our brains work and the way they can fail and the consequences of them failing makes me feel so grateful that I'm healthy and whole and the people I care about uh, as well. And, uh, and so I think it's, it's deepened my appreciation of sort of all the everyday pleasures. I've been a, a long-standing fan of poetry, actually. If you look around the office here, you'll notice that there are many poetry books. It's a, a nice, quick thing you can do between uh, meetings and at the end of the day. I used to write more poetry than I do now. Um, I'm currently reading uh, Ada Limon, the UW grad, who is the Poet Laureate of the US at the moment. Uh, so that, that, that's something that's been a long-standing pleasure for me. Um, I find physical activity very uh, stimulating. Hiking and, and swimming. Right now I'm playing volleyball with my wife. Not like when I was 20. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not, uh, not quite that limber, but it's been a lot of fun. Um, and then I'm actually uh, a very quiet and introverted person. And so for me, being at home with my wife and her three kids, my wife and kids, that's sort of like my slice of heaven. no skills you need, you just need interest. And there's, there's so much in the neuroscience landscape that there will be a place where you will A, be passionate and B, be necessary. Mm -hmm.